Hoo boy. Okay, so Of Mice and Men is a book about horrible, horrible, depressing stuff. You might be wondering if I'm going to be drawing the frames for this, and I can say with certainty that I will not, for several reasons. First, this is way faster, and I don't want to keep this story in my head for any longer than necessary. Second, I get way more emotionally invested in stuff that I have to draw, as anyone who saw my Odyssey video might have realized. <laughs> Man, I looked sketchy back then. And thirdly, because there is a perfectly fine movie version of this particular book that does a better job of capturing the bleak, desolate worldview that Steinbeck loves so dearly than I ever could. So the main characters are these dudes George and Lenny. George is a small, smart man, while Lenny is a large, stupid man. See, they got a, a yin-yang thing going. Symbolism? Anyway, George and Lenny are besties, with George basically serving as the wall between Lenny and a cold, cruel world that doesn't understand him, while simultaneously trying to build a happy, peaceful life for them both. Well, that's nice. I hope we get to see them succeed. Have I mentioned this takes place during the Great Depression? So unfortunately, it's a little tricky for Lenny and George to scrape together the money for their dream of a little farm with fluffy rabbits and perpetual sunshine, mostly because Lenny has a few quirks that make it hard for them to hold down a job. First of all, he's enormous. Second, he's very strong. And third, he's obsessed with soft things and really likes touching them. The end result of this is a lot of cute, fluffy, and very dead animals, and at least one assault charge from the time he wouldn't let go of a girl's skirt. Yeah, I'm sure this story is gonna go great. So our story begins with George and Lenny heading to a new ranch for a new job, after losing their last one by getting run out of town after the aforementioned skirt thing. George momentarily contemplates how much easier his life would be without Lenny, but we all know that's empty speculation. <laughs> Uh, anyway, George keeps Lenny entertained by telling him how they're gonna have a farm and animals and live off the fat of the land. Lenny's the most excited about the prospect of owning rabbits because, again, he likes soft things. Get used to this character trait, as it's the only one he has. So before they head into town, George tells Lenny that if anything bad happens in town, Lenny should hide by the river in this specific spot so George can find him. I hope that Chekhov's gun doesn't end up getting fired. Anyhow, they arrive and get set up where the boss is immediately slightly suspicious at how little Lenny's talking, but that's much less of a problem than the sudden arrival of his son, Curly, a walking Napoleon complex who makes his entrance into the story by picking a fight with Lenny and swaggering away when Lenny doesn't comprehend that he's being provoked. Anyway, we learn that Curly has a wife he married two weeks ago who's already making eyes at the ranchers, which goes a long way towards explaining why he's picking fights with everyone with a Y chromosome. And George warns Lenny not to fight Curly because that's a one-way ticket to Firedsville. Sure hope that doesn't come up again. Anyway, then Curly's wife shows up, poses for a couple minutes, and then sprints off when she hears her husband's around. Lenny's entranced by her, calling her Purdy, which immediately leaves George worried about what he might end up doing. But this train of thought is disrupted by the entrance of another character, Slim, who's apparently the literal coolest and passes out puppies like party favors. Man, I want to be friends with this guy. So the next day, Slim and George talk about Lenny, and George explains why they're traveling together, which boils down to, George used to bully the hell out of them when they were kids, but then he figured out that it's no fun to bully someone if they don't even realize they're being bullied. What a stellar example of human compassion. Meanwhile, Lenny likes puppies. Shocker. Anyway, another one of the rancher's employees is this old dude named Candy, who's got a dog who's ancient and stinky and way more trouble than he's worth, so another one of the ranchers urges him to put the old dog down and save them both a world of trouble. Huh, that almost sounds like it's mirroring the experience of another important character. How bizarre. Anyway, the other rancher volunteers to put the dog down, and he does. Man, this is just the feel-good novel of the century. More Curly's wife drama happens, as Curly runs in looking for her again, and then immediately runs out again to go look for Slim, who he suspects of sleeping with her. George and Lenny discuss their dreams of a house with rabbits again, but this time Candy mentions that he has money saved up that he could give them, if they took him with them when they left to buy the farm. This is the best thing that's happened to them in a while, since together they'd have nearly enough money to actually do it. Wow! Their dream is suddenly so close to being a reality! Sure hope nothing goes horribly wrong in the next few minutes. Enter Curly and Slim, arguing furiously. Curly, looking to take out his aggression on someone who can't kick his ass, notices Lenny, still happy at the prospect of the farm, and decides that picking a fight with the eight-foot super-strong giant is the best idea ever. So he very briefly kicks Lenny's ass until George tells Lenny to fight back a little, and Lenny does this by crushing Curly's fist. Oh boy. Fortunately, Slim, still the best guy ever, easily convinces Curly not to tell anyone how his hand got so messed up, with the reasoning being that Curly's too much of an egomaniac to be able to handle the humiliation. Whew, crisis averted, right? Anyway, next morning Lenny goes and tries to make friends with Crooks, who's the black stable buck, which proves difficult because Crooks is, with reason, not the happiest individual. But then Candy shows up, and when they discuss their idyllic view of a farm in the future, even the jaded Crooks is a fan of the idea. And then Curly's wife shows up again. She's her usual degree of flirty with Lenny, but this time it's coupled with a healthy dose of racism towards Crooks. She does, however, put together that Lenny broke Curly's hand, and apparently she finds this super hot. Uh. Anyway, she casually threatens to have Crooks lynched, and then leaves, and the now disillusioned Crooks says he's not interested in joining them on the farm anymore. Feel good novel of the century. Anyway, it's now later, and Lenny's sitting in the barn with his puppy, which is now dead, because, again, he's super strong and can't leave soft things alone. He's very conflicted about the dead puppy, because if George finds out that he killed it, he might not let him tend the rabbits in their idyllic, totally gonna happen farm future. Anyway, while he's debating what to do, who should appear but that harbinger of unnecessary complications herself, Curly's wife. So Curly's wife persuades Lenny to talk to her, even 
even though George warned him that she'd give them nothing but trouble. Lenny's sad the puppy's dead, while Curly's wife is sad that she can't make something of her life. Basically, her story is that a long while ago, she met a dude who said he was going to make her a star. But rather than that story playing out Chicago style, he never got back to her. She thought maybe her mother sabotaged her chances, so she ran off and married Curly out of spite. Lenny is, of course, completely uninterested, instead continuing to bemoan the potential loss of more fluffy things, and Curly's wife decides to try speaking his language, and offers to let him pet her hair, which is itself remarkably soft and fluffy. Lenny's very excited and pets her hair, but she freaks out when she feels how strong he is and tries to pull away. Lenny, as previously established, reacts to this by panicking, and long story short, he accidentally breaks her neck. So now that's two fluffy deaths that he doesn't want George finding out about. Lenny remembers what George told him to do in case he gets into trouble, and sneaks away to hide by the river. Later that day, Candy and George discover her body, and they immediately put together what happened and resolve to tell the others, although George insists that they not be allowed to hurt Lenny. Unfortunately, Curly is definitely going to want to shoot him, so George low-key sends them off in the wrong direction, saying they came from the north so Lenny would have gone south, and heads off on his own with one of the rancher's guns. So Lenny's off hiding by the river, having visions of his dead aunt Clara and giant rabbits telling him he's a terrible person, when George finds him. Although Lenny expects George to give him hell and tell him how much easier his life would be without him, George instead tells him to take off his hat, feel the wind, and look across the river. Lenny starts describing, in vivid, beautiful detail, the farm where they're gonna live, and the rabbits that Lenny will get to take care of. And then he shoots Lenny in the head. Feel good novel of the century.